Welcome back to Nightcast. An ultimatum and a deadline tonight from the family of a murdered Minnesota corrections officer. Joseph Gom was killed by an inmate at the Stillwater Prison in July of 2018. And in an interview on Nightcast last week, family told Jake Hulls it could have been easily prevented. Now Gom's family wants Governor Tim Walz to step in and end a stalemate over a proposed $3 million settlement at the legislature. As Jake Coles explains, if it's not approved during the expected special session, family will take their case to court. And we've been struggling along for three years now. The family of Joseph Gom insists the Department of Corrections and the state ignored repeated security warnings from other corrections officers and even inmates. Gom's sister says the family wants the state to take responsibility. That Joe was not in a safe work environment. And for somebody to finally admit that somebody didn't do their job and it cost Joe to lose his life. Audrey Cohn says their frustration is now pointed right at state lawmakers. I feel like Joe's been pushed under the rug. Everybody's sorry for what happened. Nobody wants to take responsibility. And for us, we're still fighting for justice for Joe. Edward Johnson, seen in this BCA video a short time after the attack, was charged and later pleaded guilty to murdering Gom. I don't think I need to tell you that when Joe died, he was all alone. Something men, of course, Stab knew and something the criminal uh, who killed Joe, uh, Joe knew also. According to the BCA investigative file in 2018, an inmate told investigators Gom should not have been left alone in the prison's metal shop with dozens of prisoners the day of his murder. The M shop supervisor wasn't there that day, and we only had one officer up there, which has never happened anyway. That should never happen. There should always be two officers at all times in a situation like that up there. The investigative file also includes safety warnings from several corrections officers. One officer told investigators Johnson should have been transferred out of Stillwater because she says he had a violent history in the prison. And she adds she tried alerting her bosses. I was screaming at them rooftops and they weren't listening. It wasn't if it was when. He's full of rage, and this was totally premeditated what he did. GOM family attorney Mike Padden says these examples and others, such as no security cameras in the metal shop area, indicate GOM was unnecessarily placed in harm's way. This is especially true since this is a death that could have easily been prevented. Padden says Governor Walls admitted during a 2019 phone call with GOM's sister that mistakes were made. This never should have happened, and we will make this right. This is a direct quote from the governor. Padden says the governor's wife, Gwen Walls, also offered assistance. Mrs. Walls specifically said this to my clients. Please contact us if you need anything. Well, this is the time. Now is the time. Governor, we ask for your leadership to push this bill forward. Now, we reached out to the governor's office and the Department of Corrections for comment today. They directed us to the comment the DOC gave us for our story last week. That says in part that substantial changes have occurred at Stillwater, including improved staffing levels in industry areas, a revised tool control policy, and staff no longer working alone with inmates. Lindsay? All right, Jay, the family is very clear about mm -hmm. what they want. What happens next? Well, Lindsay, the family attorney says if the legislature does not approve the $3 million settlement by the end of the expected special session, they will take the case to court and they will file a wrongful death lawsuit. Patton says the statute of limitations is up in July, so you can expect that if it doesn't get done in a special session sometime right. between now and about the middle of July, uh, something's probably going to happen. Time is running out. Yes. Jay, thank you yep. so much. Mm -hmm.